In this video, we are going to demonstrate some geometric constructions in GeoGebra. So, GeoGebra sort of has two facets, and you can kind of tell by the name. You got geometry and you got algebra. So, in the algebra facet, we do things like graphing functions and drawing tangent lines and all that kind of stuff. In the geometry uh, perspective, we can create figures and manipulate those figures to observe what properties change and what properties stay the same as we change various parts. So let's get started here. Uh, I've gone to geogebra.org and I'm going to go to start calculator. All right, now when it comes up, it's in this kind of mode here. It looks like it's ready for me to graph some stuff. So what I'm going to do is go up here to the upper right and click that and select geometry. Okay, and it gives me kind of a blank slate. Okay, you can, you know, br you can bring the axes back if you want. They're, but uh, since we're going to be working with some figures, we don't really need those. Okay, and you'll notice we've got an array of tools over here displayed for us, okay? The um, algebra window is still there, you just got to go to a different place. Okay, so let me do, I want to make a rectangle, let's say. All right, now, there's a bit of a difference between a drawing in GeoGebra and a construction in GeoGebra. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, this is just going to be a drawing. All right, so if I do something like this, okay, uh, oops, Go back to the move tool. Okay, you can see that kind of looks like a rectangle, but I can move the various vertices around, so it's not really a rectangle. If we're talking about doing a construction and I want to construct a rectangle, well, the sides have to stay perpendicular to that, to each other, no matter what I do to the vertices. Okay, so let me give myself a clean slate here. Get rid of all that. Okay, now. I am going to start by putting in a couple points here, points A and B, and I'll connect them with a segment. All right. Now, I don't want to put in my third point yet because I want the sides to remain perpendicular. So I'm going to go and select the perpendicular line tool. Okay. And pay attention to this right here. It tells you what you need to do. Okay, so we're going to select the point that we want the line to go through. So we want it to go through point A. We want it to be perpendicular to this line. All right, now if I select the Move tool, you'll see that no matter what I do to this segment, that line that we just created remains perpendicular to our segment. So my next point, I need it to be on this line. Okay, let me make sure that it really is on that line. Okay, I can't move it off. Okay, great. Notice it'll let me slide it up and down the segment, but it won't let me pull it off no matter how hard I try. Okay, so I'm um, getting to be a little bit closer to having my rectangle done. So now I'm going to have a new line. I'm going to do another perpendicular line here. Perpendicular line through this point, and it's going to be perpendicular to this, okay? So, if I go back to the Move tool, notice no matter what I do, that line through C stays perpendicular to this one right here, okay? And lastly, we'll do one more perpendicular line, we'll have perpendicular through B, perpendicular to this, okay? Now, um, I guess I can just, my last point, I want to click right on that intersection. Okay, and that's going to be my fourth point. 
Okay, so I've got uh, my points here. I've got these segments that are all going to stay perpendicular to each other. Let me go to the Move tool here. Okay, so we can see A, B, C, D. That's a rectangle. Okay, no matter what I do, it stays a rectangle. I do want you to notice something here. Notice that points A, B, and C, they all came out blue, and point D came out gray. That actually does uh, encode some information. Notice you can't manipulate D. I can't drag it anywhere like I can the other points. Okay, so points A and B are basically totally free. I can do whatever I want with them. Point C is constrained to this line, and point D is determined completely by these two lines. It's got to be at the intersection of those two lines, so I can't move D freely. Okay, now, This is a little messy. It's got like scaffolding behind it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, let me see, what is show hide object? Okay, let me hide that. Let me hide, in fact, let me hide everything except A, B, C, and D. And then I'll go to the polygon tool, okay? And then I will select my vertices. And now if I go to the Move tool, I've got a nice rectangle. Okay. Now that stuff is... That stuff I hid is still kind of in the background. In fact, if I go to the Algebra window, look at all that stuff there. Okay. And I need all that stuff. Right. The line G, that's still there because the line G determines point C. If I just delete the line G, the whole thing goes away, right? Because that figure depended on point C being on line G. If line G is gone, then I don't have point C anymore. And if I don't have point C, I don't have a perpendicular through C. So um, you got you to gotta keep that stuff available Right, you might, just might not need to see all of it. Okay. So, that is a very quick tutorial on constructions in GeoGebra. Now, when I talk about constructions, I mean a situation like this. It's not a figure that looks kind of like a rectangle, but then if I drag a vertex, it gets all messed up. I mean a figure that, no matter what I do to it, the sides... Stay perpendicular. Okay, so quadrilateral where the sides are perpendicular, we got a rectangle. Okay, so that's the basics of constructions in GeoGebra. You need to use these tools here. You want sides to be perpendicular, use the perpendicular line tool. Right? You want things parallel, use the parallel line tool. Um, so those types of things. Okay.